The date is August 9, 1969, and a rising movie star is living a normal life in Los Angeles with her director husband. Well, as normal as it gets for Hollywood, she is being entertained by some of her famous friends, and as soon as she is alone, the screaming starts. She rushes out only to find out that her friends were being hacked to pieces. In an instant, she is held down by a woman. She begs for mercy, but her mercy stops soon because she was stabbed 16 times. Who were these murderers? We all know them. The Manson family. Charles Manson and the Manson family both are household names in the killing business. From the brutality of the murder of an actress this family committed to their bizarre trial, everything about this story is insane. But let's start with the spearhead of the Manson family. Charles Manson was born to a destitute 16-year-old girl in Ohio who later married the man who gave Charles his last name. We bet he's regretting that now. Charles, at the age of nine, had already started his life a crime as he was cutting school and stealing. As a result of this delinquency, he spent most of the 20 years in reform schools, which never helped anybody. But they did teach him a thing or two about escalating his life a crime. Soon after, he began stealing cars and transporting them across state lines. This landed him in his first prison, and he would continue to have an on-again, off-again relationship with the justice system for the next 11 years. At 32, Charles was part of a budding counterculture movement in San Francisco. What's a counterculture movement, you ask? Let us enlighten you. This particular counterculture movement was feeling a bit sorry for itself and decided to throw tantrums to gain attention. And Charles was the biggest attention seeker of them all. He became sort of a guru or a master for women who were generally lost in life and helpless. Eventually, these people became the Manson family and traveled around before settling in L.A. There they did two things, take drugs and trail after music moguls, hoping to make Charles into a huge musician and become part of the movement they were trying to counter. And this was the very start. Things took a bad turn the next year. The first murder was committed by the Manson family in 1969. A musician and friend of Charles Manson named Gary Hidman made the mistake of not returning Charles's money. The Manson family did the only sane thing they could do, not coming back and asking again, but hacking him to pieces. Yeah, that's totally normal. Not. And this family didn't go wild without orders. Charles Manson reportedly ordered them to kill Gary Hinman. Then came the most infamous of the Manson murders, the killing of Sharon Tate. If you're not a classic film enthusiast, we'll give you an introduction. Sharon Tate was a star and the girlfriend of Roman Polanski, a very famous director. On the night of her murder, she was eight months pregnant and being entertained by five other people, four of whom were famous as well. Four members of the Manson family, Susan, Linda, Tex, and Patricia, decided to drop by the tea party on the orders of Charles Manson. Linda stood guard while the rest of them went inside and hacked Tate's friends into pieces while Tate begged for her unborn son's life. Well, they wouldn't be the Manson family if they listened to other people, right? So they stabbed the actress 16 times, which was really unnecessary. Of course, the entire nation reeled from this news. The Manson family, though, the devil works hard, but they worked harder. The very night, they committed two more murders and even brought their buddy Charles along with them. Toward the end of their spree, they murdered one more man. That is, until two months later. We really shouldn't be giving out crime-committing tips, but have you ever heard of the phrase, don't break the law when you're breaking the law? Because the Manson family wasn't caught because of their murders. They were caught because they were driving stolen vehicles. Then slowly, the secrets spilled out. When the 24 members of the Manson family were arrested, Susan told her inmate an almost unbelievable story. She told her in explicit detail about finding Sharon Tate and tasting her blood. At the same time, the cops were interviewing a few biker gangs who told the police that Charles Manson had said something about pigs and riding with blood. But why is that important? because the Manson family did write pigs with blood on their victims' doors. After Susan's story leaked out, the cops were a little more than shocked. Less with the story, but more with why would a person tell a complete stranger about their crimes? It was enough to make Charles and his family go to trial. 
The chief prosecutor, who was selected, named Vincent, and he was brutal. He won 103 convictions out of 104 and would manage to get Charles Manson a death sentence without him actually murdering anybody. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. The trial is one of the interesting parts of the story, after all. Susan was given an offer of exception from a death sentence if she testified against the Manson family. She agreed and refused a few days later. But no worries. Vincent found a better witness who eventually became the star witness of the case, a Manson family member named Linda Kasabian. Yep, Linda, the girl who stood guard. Opening statements began on July 24th, and the Manson family showed up with X marks cut into their foreheads. Weird flex, but okay. Vincent said in his opening statement that he had found the motive for the murders, and they were perhaps way more insane than the murders themselves. A major distraction came on the court after Charles held up the Times newspaper. It said, Manson guilty, Nixon declares. The defense moved for a mistrial on the grounds that the jury might be biased because the president had prematurely stated his personal views. Fortunately, the judge had the sense to deny the mistrial and the proceedings went ahead. Eventually, the motive did come out and it was probably the motive that has been the cause of most murderers in the world. Racism. Also insanity, but mostly racism. Charles Manson was of the view that black people would kill all the white people and the Manson family would hide in caves and survive. Uh-oh, it, it gets much worse. Then he said that the black people would find out that they were not fit to govern and ask for Charles's help after their thirst for murder had died. Then guess what the magnanimous Charles would do? Kick the black man who approached him and ask him to go pick cotton. Can you even count how many degrees of insanity his motive was? We really can't. After the truth came out, the defense gave up without actually defending anything. The three women with Charles Manson stood up and shouted they wanted to testify as well. But most surprisingly, Charles himself said that he wanted to testify. His testimony lasted for over an hour. And hold on, folks. The ride gets even wilder from here onwards. First, he blamed the murders on the account of him being illiterate, which he wasn't. Then on the fact that not everybody in the nation was a vegan. Then on the fact that he had spent most of his life walking in and out of jails. And then on the other members of the Manson family. Next, he said to his family, there's no need to testify, and walked away. We also cannot comprehend the stupidity. Well, Vincent was victorious in his statement, as he said that the victims were crying out for justice. The jury found every member of the Manson family, including Charles Manson, guilty on charges on first-degree murders. Our least favorite crazy girl, Susan, declared, you better lock your doors and keep a watch on your kids. However, the Manson family never got their deaths by the electric chair, as the Court of California declared the death penalty to be unconstitutional. So where are the members of the Manson family now? Susan died of terminal brain cancer in 2009. Charles Manson died at 83 due to natural causes in 2017. The other three female defendants expressed remorse for their crimes, were exemplary mates, and even offered to do charity work. However, they are refused parole. 